Hello everyone, my name is Laura and I'm here to talk to you all about kleptomania this week. So kleptomania is listed in the DSM-5 under disruptive, impulse control, and conduct disorders. It used to be listed as an OCD related disorder, so this is a recent change from the DSM-4 to the 5. Um, and the diagnostic code is F63.2. The diagnostic criteria are as follows. First, a recurrent failure to resist impulses to steal objects that are not needed for personal use or for their monetary value. An increasing sense of tension immediately before committing the theft. Pleasure, gratification, or relief at the time of committing the theft. The stealing is not committed to um, express anger or vengeance and is not in response to a delusion or hallucination. And stealing is not better explained by conduct disorder, a manic episode, or antisocial personality disorder. Some additional diagnostic features are that the individuals may hoard, secretly return, throw away, or even give away items that they stole. There's a lack of planning and forethought to avoid detection. So although someone will um, exercise some restraint and they're not going to steal directly in front of a police officer or in another scenario that will um, where an arrest will be inevitable, but there's not a lot of forethought into what will happen a few steps down the road. The individual with kleptomania usually acts alone. It's not something that's done with accomplices. The individual is aware that stealing is wrong and may feel guilty and depressed after stealing. And there's usually a resist to urge. Um, a re they usually try to resist the urge to steal. And there's also some evidence that people may build a tolerance. So over time, they're stealing increasingly more valuable items. In terms of prevalence and comorbidity, the DSM states that um, 0.32, 0.6 of the general population is diagnosed with kleptomania and that out of convicted shoplifters, 4 to 24 percent of these have kleptomania. There's also a lot more females that are diagnosed than males with a 3 to 1 ratio. Kleptomania is linked to other behaviors and conditions such as depressive and bipolar disorders, especially major depressive disorder, anxiety disorders, um, eating disorders, especially bulimia nervosa, personality disorders, substance use disorders, especially um, alcoholism, and other impulse and conduct disorders. So in terms of the substance use disorders, there are neurotransmitter pathways associated with serotonin, dopamine, and opioid systems that are involved in this disorder, So, um, as they are in other instances of behavioral addiction. So we do see a strong connection there, and it also comes into play in treatment modalities. The course of this disorder is that the onset can be at any age, although most commonly first noted in adolescence. There are three different pathways. So the first being um, sporadic stealing with sporadic, which includes brief episodes and long periods of remission. Episodic, which involves um, prolonged periods of stealing and periods of remission. And chronic kleptomania, which does have its fluctuations. There is um, also persistent stealing despite legal consequences, and studies by Presta et al. and McElroy have estimated that between 64 and 87 percent of people with kleptomania have been arrested for stealing at some point. The prognosis of this disease is that there are, um, if gone untreated, there are many legal consequences that can result in disruptions to interpersonal and occupational domains of life. There's a tendency to avoid treatment in order to maintain secrecy. People often wait 5 to 10, um, 10 to 20 years before seeking treatment, and they may only get treatment as part of legal ramifications and mandated by uh, the court. When treatment is sought out, though, it can be very successful. And we see that there is a strong family component there. Many first-degree relatives of those with kleptomania um, also have OCD and substance use disorders, um, and it's more often than the general public. In terms of cultural considerations, so there's surprisingly little work has been done to understand kleptomania in a cultural context. So it's one of the few disorders that was not assigned to a task force during the, the revision of the DSM-4, so it largely went untouched. It's very much the same from previous editions. So there is one study I was able to find by Christianini et al. in 2015 that translated and evaluated the kleptomania sim uh, symptom assessment scale, the KSAS, in a Brazilian sample, and it yielded that the Brazilian sample was on average younger and more likely to be single and also suffer from an anxiety or eating disorder. There's also um, obviously a lot of work that needs to be done to better understand why this is and also apply to different cultural contexts. 
The etiology of this disease is understood through diff three different schools of thought, the first being an effective spectrum model, and it um, highlights the, co the high comorbidity with mood disorders. Um, symptoms of kleptomania tend to worsen with depression, so they are um, believing that there is a linkage. And kleptomania is also associated with hypomania and mania. There's the um, attention deficit hyperactivity model. This is really a budding perspective that calls for additional research. Not a lot have work, not a lot of work has been done, um, but there are some connections between kleptomania and inattentiveness and impulsive, um, impulsiveness. Lastly, there is the behavioral addiction model that draws a lot of parallels between kleptomania and substance use disorders. Um, sharing these seven premises. So the urge to steal despite knowledge of negative consequences, tension building before um, the behavior is performed, quick but short-lived reduction of the urge and tension immediately after stealing, um, and this the urge to steal returns after hours, days, or weeks, external cues that lead to stealing, and secondary conditioning by external and internal cues. So it could be that someone steals out of boredom or feelings of sadness. Um, and that ceiling brings a feeling of pleasure, so there is a hedonistic principle there. Um, uh, this also speaks to the high comorbidity of substance use disorders, so studies have identified that between 29 and 50 percent of klepto people with kleptomania also have a history of substance use disorders. And individuals with, individuals with kleptomania can be responsive to anti-addiction medication, so different treatments um, there's a different treatment response. There's a closer alignment to addiction and mood disorders, which brings about a higher success rate with lithium, antiepileptics, and opioid antagonists than SSRIs that are used by OCD patients. For assessments, there are two that have been used. So the Kleptomania Symptom Assessment Scale, the KSAS, it's an 11-item self-report scale. Um, you're scoring each item on a scale of one, uh, 0 to 4, and it measures symptoms experienced in the past seven days. So it measures the severity, frequency, duration, and level of control over impulses and thoughts relating to theft, emotion before and after, and interpersonal, occupational, financial, and legal, and health problems experienced as a result. Uh, remission is classified as a score less than 11, um, equal to or less than 11. There's the Yale-Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale. It's been modified for kleptomania, but it hasn't been validated on a sample of kleptomania. Um, it measures time occupied and the degree of life interference, distress, resistance, and degree of control over thoughts, urges, and behaviors relating to theft. It's a 10-item self-report scale, and each item is scored 0 to 4. Um, later assessment is associated with greater shame and secrecy surrounding the disorder, so having an um, earlier intervention is always better for the prognosis. Differential diagnoses, you do want to make sure when diagnosing um, for kleptomania that it, you're separating it from instances of ordinary theft. So kleptomania is characterized by a lack of deliberateness, uh, the object stolen lack usefulness or worth, and stealing does not serve a so, uh, social purpose. So these are not people that are rebelling against their parents or the establishment or dared by their peers. You also want to make sure that you are distinguishing kleptomania from instances of malingering, antisocial personality disorder, and conduct disorder. So um, antisocial behavior is not limited to stealing. It's going to be present in various domains of life. And also that this is not part of a manic or psychotic episode or major neurocognitive disorder. There are, um, so the treatments used for kleptomania seem to uh, focus on pharmacological interventions and psychotherapy. So in terms of medications, um, SSRIs are used including fluxetine, fluvoxamine, and paroxetine. And these were originally prescribed because kleptomania was thought to be more closely related to OCD than we think of it today. So studies yielded um, Inconsistent findings. So some studies even noted that uh, there is an aggravation of kleptomania symptoms when the patient was prescribed SSRIs. Uh, we're also now moving more towards using mood stabilizers such as lithium and valpor valparate and antileptic drugs such as topiramate. Um, so they're demonstrating some process, but there's more research that needs to be done to better understand their benefit. There's also um, opioid antagonists like naltrexone that work indirectly on opioid receptors and creates a similar gratification of the urge. And there's research relating um, pharmacological treatment of kleptomania. The current body of research really lacks controls and consistent time frames, so we do need to tighten those up to better understand and see if maybe there is more benefit than we are understanding. 
In terms of psychotherapy, there is um, psychodynamic psychotherapy. We really rely on case studies because there's a lack of controlled studies to demonstrate empirical results and cognitive behavioral therapy, including covert sensitization, aversion therapy, and systematic desensitization. So for covert sensitization, um, individuals with kleptomania are asked to imagine themselves stealing and then imagine what negative outcomes could arise, such as being apprehended and feeling nauseous and experiencing a shortness of breath. In aversion therapy, you're pairing an impulse to steal with uncomfortable sensations. This can be achieved by holding one's breath or snapping their wrist with a rubber band. And systematic desensitization is learning to control the urge to steal by controlling the anxiety. So a case vignette that I found and adapted from Tally 2011 is um, a 54-year-old Caucasian woman is seeking treatment for attention and concentration issues. Her psychiatric history includes major depressive disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which was diagnosed in childhood, and post-traumatic stress disorder due to a car accident. This accident occurred five years ago while she was driving, and it resulted in the death of her husband and another passenger and left the patient with permanent physical disabilities. The patient was hospitalized once in her 20s for depression, and she reported that she has a history of alcohol abuse, but has been sober for 10 years. Patients shared that her childhood was marked with violence and chaos due to her father's alcoholism and constant conflict with her mother. The patient completed high school and worked in retail until becoming disabled. Her first session revealed that she periodically experiences feelings of great tension that are only um, re um, relieved by stealing petty objects that she then keeps in a collection in her home. The patient reported that her first act of theft was when she was in high school um, and she was detained but later released by mall security. The patient denied having ever shared this information with anyone and notes that her shoplifting has increased since the car accident. Um, so you can see in this example that her symptoms are very dependent on other things that's going on in her life. So with the PTSD starting, although she did not um, return to her alcohol use, it seems that she had a spike in her um, kleptomania related behaviors to kind of relieve that tension and um, soothe her anxiety. And here are the references that I used to compile and do my research for this presentation. Thank you so much for listening and um, have a great week.